more localized. So looking down, we might not see anything. We see just a hole, uh, likely, uh, and most probably at an angle. But just the same, that elevator, as you said, is now coming into view. Where is this? Is this elevator just uh, directly port? in front of you? Yeah, is it port of a midships? Or are we yeah. all over at the edge? No. Well, got a diagram here. Got Pretty it. much lined right on yep. up center. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. And you can see off on the port side, you can see Tubbs five inch gun. One five inch gun in place, the other one dead jettison. And that's five inch 38 caliber weapon. These expansion joints wouldn't have been raised at all, would they? I'd imagine they'd be flat. It's a flat top, it's a flat runway, but uh, I keep thinking that I see the expansion joints and that white feature on them seems to be raised a bit. Is that, are you seeing that? I can get a zoom here if Tito's okay with it. Uh, would you like me to adjust anything before you do? Uh, I think we're okay. I'm just going to yeah. try and get Go this ahead. white. Frank, you think that's okay? Well, it looks like. There's actually a stanchion or something rising up towards us right there. Coming out. Planks running the beam of the vessel? No, they're running the length. Otherwise, they could, uh, you know, warp and, yeah, and, yeah. and catch an aircraft. Even. What's this right in front of us? It's sticking up from the bottom. It looks like it has a diagonal support or sticking up from the deck. I don't know. But they've had safety lines they put around when the elevator's down. Because it looks like there's a cable running uh, fore and aft from it. Do you see that with the shadow? Yeah. Uh, when the next bounce down, I'll do a little tiny zoom and try and get a shot of this. Maybe that's what Hans was referring to there. We think it's uh, it's going towards. We we're thinking, looking at a picture, a pre-war picture of the uh, Yorktown from the air. It looks like it might be a expansion joint. Oh. There is a band right in front of the. Um, that elevator well. And you can see we've got that lip there too. So there's there. a lip there. So that's just a temporary stanchion that's split. Yeah, that blue gray metal makes me think it's something that was on this deck, not that it came up from below. Wish we had like one meter scaling lasers. 
Yeah, you do kind of miss the scaling lasers. I really do. <laughs> they help. How high is Atalanta hovering over your uh, right My now? minimum depth or uh, altitude above the flight deck has been about five meters. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep it between six and eight. And we're zoomed in right now, yes? No, we're full wide. Oh, okay. Yeah, on the heave I've seen as low as five, but I'm kind of keeping that as my minimum. And Tito, we have some viewers that are uh, noticing and wondering that we're using Atalanta on this dive instead of Hercules. I'm sorry, could you? Yeah, Go repeat ahead. that. Um, I said we have some viewers that are noticing that we're using Atalanta on this dive instead of our usual dual body system with Atalanta and Hercules. Can you speak to that a little bit about why um, we're using only Atalanta to reach the steps? Well, Big Herc doesn't go to 6,500, or doesn't go this deep, and a Little mm -hmm. Herc does, but we had a little bit of damage to Little Herc that uh, prevented us from uh, being able to utilize it on this dive. We're adapting. Mm -hmm. Looks like there's a cable off to the right in that uh, elevator well. Yep. Yeah. Where it's coming up and onto the deck. I like that angle of tilt. Did you say you like this angle? Yeah, I do. Okay, I'll leave it there. It doesn't get blown out as much by the lights on the back of the Catalina. I'm going to swing left a bit. I'm going to be I'm, uh, seeing decking down inside that elevator well. That's a ladder that looks like it's collapsed. Yeah. Um, I think in post processing we'll be able to pull Another some of that out. <laughs> that marking that we were looking at with this forward of the elevator uh, could be um, part of the uh, arresting gear that would have been fitted over the forward part because uh, the carriers were also designed to recover over the bow in the event that um, it couldn't be concerned. Um, right. Looking at the pictures, it does look like that. Uh, in that, that position, so that could be that, that could be what we're looking at as well. With that as well, uh, Silver Spring has just been joined by another watch stander. We have John Albertson from Search, who has now joined us. John is the head of Search's Maritime Division, and the last deep water shipwreck he worked on was as part of the team that worked on finding Shackleton's endurance. Wow. Back to the uh, question that was asked earlier on an earlier dive about the experience of the team. Tito, you okay? Welcome, John. Hey there, John. Game, if I try and get a Great. zoom inside this elevator yeah, well. Yeah, go ahead if you like the angle. Uh, would you like me to come around or anything? Yeah, no, just hold there. Yep. And it's really hard to pull that out. Looks like maybe a ladder or staircase or yeah. something in the at the bottom. Yep running the beam, maybe favoring forward a little bit. It oh, watch lead, uh, yeah. Nav. I was going to call in another move just to try to keep us moving along yep. the center line yep. here. We're not perfect. quite done this one, but... Yep, perfect. Okay. It looks like two cables going forward. Bridge, Nav. Okay, full wide. We'd like to do a ship move, 35 meters. Bearing two zero zero. Thank you. Uh, hmm. 
So that elevator well that we were just looking at was used to bring up, I'm assuming, aircraft that were stored beneath the flight deck? Yeah, so they would, um, they would work on aircraft, like repair them and stuff um, at the hangar deck, and then they would uh, bring them up. They would also bring ordnance up to attach to, uh, so to rearm planes. So mm -hmm. like a cavity of some sort right there? Well, yeah, there's, there's, um, I mean, the, the hang, that goes into the hangar deck, so that's, there's a uh, big gate. Uh, I'm, I have a much better monitor over here. Uh, Would that staircase have been there for, like, safety reasons for uh, the sailors to be able to get, just walk to the top? No, I don't think it'd be useful. I'm not really sure if that's a staircase or not. You okay with another zoom, Tito? Yes. Do you want to tilt down towards the ladder? Yeah, just a little bit, right. please. Oh, no. See what I mean? There's like a void. It's like I'm seeing a rib. Uh, oh, wow. If I don't look at this monitor, it's almost impossible to see. It's like in this area. I can't see it on your monitors. But that area appears to have depth to it beyond where that ladder is laying, coming out. Are those hard corals? to the right. <laughs> I'm leaning towards more deterioration, in my opinion, less corals. Uh. Our resident four to eight watch biologist. So I see um, a comment from a viewer that said if we look inside the elevator well, we may be able to see a mural that was painted to illustrate Yorktown's voyages, and that Dr. Ballard was able to catch a glimpse of it. Oh, wow. Um, uh, but there are no known aft? photographs of the complete mural. Which, uh, there's, which aren't hangers? there separate hangar deck or hangers? There's aren't they isolated? Uh, you want to zoom? A little tilt, maybe? Up. Do you know which elevator shaft or which side? They did not say, but for a viewer that wrote that in, if you do know, yeah. please feel free to leave mm. a comment and tell us more. Yeah. Yep, this is the forward elevator shaft. And as Wikipedia would say, please cite your sources. There, you can see that the decking down in that area better now. And I guess one that I mean, it's not in the frame now, but uh, port and aft there was a void. And I can feel you all, right. all thinking it that I should fly down in there, but I'm not going to. Nope. <laughs> I'm not thinking that. <laughs> yeah, totally I know not. Derek's not totally paying that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> These cables actually look like there's still tension on them, but that Seems could to be just about be an a illusion. 10 by 10 meter shaft. I think it'd be a pretty good size fit. Yeah. The aircraft wings probably didn't fold back then. Like it's taking about sure party here. 20 meters per uh, 20 minutes. The mural in the hangar deck is going to be more midship. It's not going to be in this area. The access point that we could have seen it at is earlier in the dive. When we can't go inside, given that we're 
flying this thing straight down. But uh, through one of the big hangars, we did look into the space where the mural is, but could not see it. Roger that, thanks. And that's further, further out than where we are now. Number two on the this yeah, is uh, one of those cases that uh, supports the argument for uh, expendable uh, cameras that can be deployed down in voids like this with rudimentary thrusters, uh, mini expendable ROVs, if you will, fly them out on a fiber. Does anybody know the dimension the between the flight deck and the, and the hangar deck? Forward? Well, just curious the height of it. I'm looking at around oh, yeah. 11 or 12 meter the, delta. Is it really that big? In the elevation? Oh, yeah, probably. Well. Yeah, I'm going to say I'm seeing about 12 meters of uh, altitude. Oh, right. So when you were over the flight deck versus I being over six, the elevator? I'm about 18, yep. Yeah. No, that makes sense. The hangar deck was, was pretty large we can continue on heading out yeah we're we're working on it the ship's moving under understood no we we know that we're just concurring and okay you're going to be coming up soon off to the side you're going to be close to the tub the forward gun tub just before the uh the bridge yep on the starboard side yep. the yeah thank you would you be on the left of the image right right but closer to the Correct. uh at Atlanta, then away from <laughs> that prep. Yeah, we're getting a nice view of the tow the tower midships, I think, in the sonar. Yeah, yeah. heading right for that. Yeah. So, thank you to our viewer Jonathan, who uh, told us about the mural and also sent a link. And Mike and Hans, I just dropped that link in the science chat if you wanted to look at it. Is your scale you. still at 10 meters? Uh, radar uh, is still, or sonar is still at 10 meters, right, guys? 10, yes. meters 10, of meter, 10 meter uh, intervals. Yes. yes, that's correct. Roger that, thank you. Get another zoom in here just for UX when we get a chance. Sure. Okay, thank you. Maybe a little tilt down. Tilting down. I think I'm seeing like where the wood was a fat, you know, is gapped now. And you're looking down onto the steel underneath. So those are the beams there, right, Mike? Sorry, those are what? The wooden beams running fore and aft. No, I don't think there's oh, wooden no, the, beams. So is this gap with the dots up there, do you see that? That's Yeah, that's probably riveted uh, plates. Okay. Uh, so about 40 meters out, we're, we're calling that, is that a five inch gun mount or a... It's the... Um, it's the, the mounts with the 1.1 inch uh, anti-aircraft guns, right? Full wide. The four barrels in a row. And that's full wide, Ed? That's full wide. Up okay, I'm going to come back up to, I think it was uh, around 43, you said was the happy spot?
I'm going to turn around to look backwards into the hangar. There's some, uh, really hard to say what that is, but a grid-like framework on the bottom there. Could be debris. The hangar only goes down, the hangar, the elevator only goes down one deck, right? Yeah. Thank you. It's another vertical off there to your right. Yeah, it's sticking up there. Maybe we saw that already. Nope. Yeah, rotating back around to face the bow, the stern. Okay, just peeking while you do it. Coming back out, full wide. For any viewers that have recently joined us, we are currently looking at the American aircraft carrier USS Yorktown, and this is the third dive of expedition NA-154 named Ala Almoana Kaiuli, which means the path of the deep sea traveler. I'm starting to pick up the starboard side structure, I think. Yeah, I think so. Oh yeah, there it is. There's that first gun mount. Derek, what's our current ship move doing? Uh, we're currently um, in the midst of a 35 meter move at bearing 200, so we're let me, see, let me measure from where we started. We've come about 25 meters, so we got about 10 meters left on that. Okay, let's um, let's finish that and then um, see where we end up. What we're going to want to do is turn and face the um, yeah. this island here, starting with these guns. Uh, face them like 90 degrees. Uh, head on. Can't set the camera how we want it. No zoom. Well, maybe a little zoom, but with the lighting, uh, and we're then we're gonna do uh, go down to, towards the stern to the end of the island, and then come up a couple meters, and then go back um, without moving the camera or zooming. For I, a, it, if I may suggest this, since we can only really control the vertical, might it be more efficient to go up? and then move over and go down. Well, I thought about that, but this this uh, island is a lot longer than it is tall. Ah, uh, Roger that. And okay. that's that going to be a lot sense. of, like, t three meter ship moves. That's going to take us a long, a long, right. lot I longer. Right, what you're doing. We can yeah. lateral left and right about five, you know, five, meter, five meters to the left, five meters to the right. <laughs> yeah, this is bigger than that. I think it's longer, yeah. <laughs> But the goal of compositing these later into a... Right. Yeah.
Mike, when you say island, are you referring to the space in between the two elevators? Nope, it's no. the, uh, the, it's what we had been calling the stack and I'd forgotten that it's actually okay. called an island until someone on shore said it. I was like, oh yeah, that's what that's called. Okay. It's what Tom Cruise buzzes by in uh, the carrier in Top Gun. Huh. Where the bridge is. Is the phrase superstructure not used on aircraft carriers? Um, I mean, it is, but it's typically, and I'd forgotten the term, but it's typically called an island. The stack is just the uh, the part that we first saw when we came down on it at the beginning of the dive with the li literal smokestack. And that comes up through the uh, island or aft yeah. of it? Yeah. Is there a certain reason why the island is on the starboard side of the ship? Um, not that they, I know uh, In early carrier oh. design, they uh, found that the um, starboard side, for whatever reason, offered the uh, optimal airflow over the deck that didn't uh, impact flight operations. The only two exceptions that were the two Japanese carriers, Akagi and Hiryu, which had their islands on the port side. But uh, subsequent testing, wind tunnel testing and all that, showed that the starboard side was better, a better placement. Ironically, it was the right side. Huh, that's cool. So this white is one of the two center lines that runs from the bow to the stern? Uh, we think it might actually be, um, what are we calling those? Uh, the expansion, like, joint? expansion joints. Ah, roger. Um, I think they're actually on the plan here. Because there are prominent white markings in some of the photos around the those areas. Nautilus, this is Shore Party. As we continue with this, Mike Hans, one of the things that we were just talking about is uh, once we proceed along this line after we get to the island, after we look down and we fly the flight deck all the way back to the stern and assess that area. What we'd like to do is not go to mud line and not go all the way back to the island, but on that side, not getting ourselves in any way underneath the, the, the vessel at the angle it's at. We would like to try to see at least up to the superstructure that side of, uh, of Yorktown, the aft starboard. Uh, sorry. Can you, so Mike? Can you can you yeah, go ahead. can you just repeat exactly what you what you want to see? So right now we're going to fly along. We're going to we're going to image the superstructure. Oh. We're going to then follow flight deck, basically midline to stern. We'll look at the stern area and what has happened there at the deck level. What I'd like to do then, <coughs> rather than recover. At that spot, we'd like to move over to the uh, starboard side, not get underneath the hull, but then follow the starboard side back towards the stack and towards that air aircraft crane so we can assess that side of it. That means, And then we'd stop there. We don't want to get uh, underneath either the, air the aircraft crane or the, or the stack or the superstructure, but that would give us that starboard quarter as well as an area that we could be looking at. That, that's about as complete as I think we can do it safely with what we've got. But that's, that's something that, uh, you know, 
short side would like to see? Yeah, I think that um, with the angle of the deck, uh, getting close enough to see anything meaningful, we would have to get too far under the flight deck. If you take an assessment when you get there and let's call it then, see what we can do. Uh, we don't want to do anything unsafe, but any data we can get while we're down here, this is like our only shot. So we'll defer to you and to, to vehicle safety, but if at all possible, uh, any additional imaging is, is a plus. Okay. When we're looking at the superstructure, did you want to be more uh, amidship or off to starboard like we are now? I'm going to try to... Sorry, who's, who's, it, who's, it, who's asking what? This is just front row, operationally speaking. Yeah, I want to try to get a little bit more center line. Uh, we've had some motion that's pulling us too far to starboard right now. Uh, Alright, I'm going to call on a ship move to try to get more to center line. And Mike, we're looking at those, I think you said they're 1.1 inch, four barrel in a row guns there, is that right? Well, we're going to be looking at the whole island. I mean, is that what's in frame now? Yeah. That? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bridge nav. Can we do a move 25 meters at bearing 225, please? Thank you. Hey, Mike, are you thinking the, uh, the vertical path is going to be the best way to do this island? Given, given some of the challenges of the lateral move and the time that it would take, or do you think we have, a, have that going for us? No, I think because the, um, the island is longer than it is tall, doing horizontal passes is better. Great. Well, yeah, that's, that's more coverage and certainly will... I think produce better results for, for what the intent, part of the intent is, so that's great. Yeah. It's quite the transition going from our last dive looking at items that were seven millimeters long to uh, 230 meters long. I think we're seeing the quad now. That's in markedly different shape than what we saw on the bow. Yeah, I don't think those are on the bow. Whatever that system was on the bow is uh, eroded much more than this has. Might be able to get the weapons are or 50 caliber machine guns, and uh, I'm not sure what weapon we're looking at here. See that cable there, Tito? It's a 1.1? Yeah. Yes. Uh, if you give me a slight tilt, I can do this. I don't want to let that cable out of frame for Down. too long. Uh, up. Up. Come yeah. Up. Wolf? Just going a couple degrees to starboard. Oh yeah, there's some guns. Looks like uh, so that's 1.1 anti-aircraft weapon. Top-mounted so magazine or feed. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Full um, wide. Yeah. So that's like. And we're at the forward end of the. Island. That's below the bridge. Yeah. But one deck above flight deck. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah,
So for sure. folks to shore, I just want to make a call out. We've been joined now by another shoreside uh, observer, <laughs> and uh, that is Niall Kafernis of Olympia, Washington. He's a naval scholar. Uh, he uh, has been watching us through the night. Niall, welcome. It's good to see you here and part of it. Uh, I think now what you can probably see now is as we're approaching the islands, you can see the tubs forward. You can see those early Mount 1.1s. They're in place. We're coming right up towards the bridge. We're going to be imaging this and then move past that to where we will likely see, as you probably saw at the early part of the dive, that damage from a bomb hit very close to the, uh, to the one end of the stack. And some pretty serious damage there that we saw. After that, and we move past this, we're then going to be moving down the center line of the flight deck. Uh, the uh, opportunity there is to see where that other bomb hit, uh, the delayed action bomb that blew that large hole in the deck that was patched. We want to see what that looks like now, and then we're going to proceed back to the stern. So, but, Chico, it looks like uh, there's good. a cable yeah, right here visiting, uh, coming up into the quarter column. I can see that. Okay. Right. Coming up? Okay. It's probably a continuation of that Again, one. Welcome now. And then uh, this decking off on the right, mm -hmm. there's one bent up about the same height. Do another opportunistic zoom on those 1.1s. <clears throat> uh, what do you want to zoom on? Yeah, probably that same gun I did before. It looks like it's got better lighting now. Coming over and coming down just a bit. That's great right there. Coming in slow. A little bit more. Oh, man. This is the Olympics of focusing. Okay, I'm very happy with that, given what I'm working with. Full wide. So when you zoom in now, I, that almost looks like biology, no? What's, what's sticking up and uh, where we thought was the cable? Uh, I think it's a continuation of that cable from below. It looks like it comes down here and then some, I think, maybe goes in front of the gun and then up. It looks like braided steel that's come undone. Can I, I agree. It does peak? not look biological. Going in again? Real quick. Uh, maybe rope? Oh, yeah. Possibly some small biota growing on it, but the structure itself appears to be rope or cable to me. Yeah, coming out, full wide. <clears throat> what is that uh, structure kind of on the right side of the screen there that's I, I white, think these whitish. are um, decking, and this one looks like it's bent up right here, but yeah. it could be wrong. That one, uh, we've got to keep an eye on. Yep. Uh, there's also a cable off to the left that's uh, going down this way. Do you see that? Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's as much of a concern. That's mainly what I'm looking for is hazards. That's quite a shot. Oh man, if you could tilt up, I could probably get a shot right in there into the, the compartment. There we go. Ready when you are. I'm ready. All right, holding. That looks uh, pretty the armored. Tower or the bridge? Con, maybe? Maybe the helm's in back in that. 
Wow. I'm going to try a little tighter. This is really pushing. It's so you're looking right in on the bridge? Aye. Yeah. Yeah, I assume the circular the thing is a clear view. Yeah. Uh, Look at that. Trying again. Um, going to come out to see where we are for I appreciate vehicle that. safety. Yep. Can you explain what a clear view is, Tito? A uh, clear view is typically a spinning device that keeps the rain off the window so you can see through it. We have them on the bridge here on the Nautilus. You can have the Nate's mates spin it up and take a look. Are we about the highest point? The, the stacks will be higher, but they're aft. As long as that tripod mass was tripod, tripod mass, tripod mass, the platform is gone. Uh, so this should be about the highest point. Uh, You're getting up towards sky country, up on top. Right. Uh, Range finders and whatnot, and after that, after that, after that mass is better lighting on the bridge. Got, Can I try that again? Air run thing. Yes. Thank you. And I tilt down just a hair. Yeah, There's I think so. And I, I'm purposely focusing inside the bridge. We're trying to. Oh man, this <laughs> eve is just brutal coming out. See my grid again very close. I still got about seven meters, of okay. eight meters of separation. Okay. Good. So I'm gonna want to haul up in just another moment. Yeah. There's a lot of debris in there. There certainly is. It's, it doesn't look I think, like. I think this whole structure was on fire, based on one of the photos. Right. Okay. That's burning. Uh, that's burning damage. Yeah, it does look melted. Yeah. All right. I think that's good. Thank you. You're very welcome. So, Derek, are we having trouble getting to the right? Uh, yeah, it appears that way. Um, oh. Oh. But again, I mean, every time I put a move in, it's a 20 minute delay in yep. response to the vehicle. Understood. Uh, keep that in mind. Is that the second quad? I'm going to try and iris down just a little bit. Probably not going to like the result, but no, it's not bad. Hmm. One of the things that remains so powerful here is not I'm only the scale of this whole Hi. Uh, aircraft carrier, but also these details, having the opportunity to, to peer in and see really the human scale, you know, that those are windows you could imagine looking out of. Was, uh... Is that another gun on top of the uh, on top of the bridge? Or? I'm not seeing it. It's a gun director. Copy gun director. Uh, yeah, what's left of it? Heavy cable on the right, but it looks like it drops down below. I see that. Thank you. A little bit of line coming over the uh, front, but it looks negative. John, you're looking at some images of the bridge. Maybe you can comment a bit on you know, just the difference between the images of the thing in 42 and what we're seeing now. Yes, sir. It's clear that, that the superstructure above above the cabin windows that we're seeing has all um, been cleared away, most likely positive. And the, Port side, super structure that we haven't seen yet. It's really incredible how much it has disappeared and sheared off above that cabin. 
We were also seeing some pretty heavy smoke and some fire in some of the first photos. And the other thing we've been thinking is that given the fall at the angle, those hydrodynamic forces are predicted. We've seen other stuff that suggests some stuff could have just been shed. And that it may be that that, that tripod mass is not alongside it. Maybe for the have we mm -hmm. settled down enough to do a quick zoom? Absolutely. Thank Would you. you like me to move her at all? I'm uh, just trying to really understand what this is or, or what happened to it a little better. It's like some type of rotary device. Mm -hmm. The gun yeah. director? It's a Mark Gun 33 director. director. Okay. Yep. What's left? You got to aim it. Mm -hmm. And I think on the right are the windows for. Uh, that's the air control, the uh, air ops. So air boss and deck. air boss. Yeah. Do we know if this fire that was started on the bridge uh, came from one of the bombs that hit the ship or one of the torpedoes? I believe it did, yeah. Just going to take a quick look over to the right. Yeah, there's a cable draping aft and off to the right, but I think we're just going to stay above that. And I'm guessing this is about 12 meters tall. That sounds about right. You can see the flight deck down there. So that's, I think we've mostly finished that move. Um, what do we want to, oh, how do we want to change orientation at this is point? Is that a man Well, we, we need to be uh, further to the right and facing left. Uh, all right, how far right do you want to be? Um, Maybe try five meters and see how that goes. Would I can't tell scale. Is can I zoom real quick? Yes. Is that a utility cabinet with the door open or a man hatch? It's a hatch. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. Frank, go ahead and scale. Point. If you look to the um, to the right of um, the director. Right. You see those windows right yeah. there? You yeah. see the, 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 that's, uh, that's primary flight control. That's where the air boss would look out over the flight deck. Mm -hmm. Get a little peek in there if you want, if you're comfortable with what's going on with the vehicle. I'm comfortable. No, by all means, this is a very important this is a very important place. Reason to be for You bet. Probably gonna be a little bit of a tilt up, but let's start at the nearest part. You'd like a tilt up? I think so. That's I'm not really sure what you're looking at. Uh, uh, air major boss major area, major. those six windows. Oh, my yeah. apologies. Yeah. 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 Coming to starboard open just a wee bit. Hi. That's great. And I'm going to tilt down just a hair. Yeah. Uh, wow, well, you can see all the way through right there. Bridge nap. Yeah. There's a half facing oh, wow. window as well. I'd like to do a ship move 10 meters. At bearing um, 270. All right, I'm just going to come out wide and see what hazards we have around us. Coming back in. Ed, what did you call this area? Uh, don't go by what I think it's called. Okay. It's flight control. Flight control? It's called Prime Line, primary flight control. Primary control. Thank you. That's a big cable, isn't it? That must be one of the arrestor cables. There's three or four, I believe, on the flight deck. Four, usually. And if you're good, you get number three. Right there? Yeah. Yeah, you go for three, I think. Defer to the experts. We can get a tight shot of that, whatever that little thing is there in the center. Just looks like utility. 
I'm a little worried about that thing popping up at us though. What we can also see as you're looking back there, there this is the area where that tripod masted platform would have been. But behind that, you can see a structure rising higher. That's the stack, and that's where another bomb hit took place. And that's one of the first things we saw when we dropped on this many hours ago, is we were hovering right over this area. Basically, the, RO, the uh, Atlanta came down practically in the same path as the bomb. One of the things that um, we're seeing here is what's left of that area. Um, in a picture taken pre-war, above prize fighters actually expansions and cabling, and that's probably what the cabling that you're seeing is from us from the lifeline that used to be there, as you can see. Yeah. And all that's been kind of blown away. So, uh, you think we could try and get a zoom of this thing over here, Tito, and see what's going sure. on there? I'm going to come a little uh, to the left. <laughs> no. That might be one of the, yeah. what they're calling the tripod supports. Or no, I mean, yeah, yeah. Good day. Yeah. Right. Nice. Zoom when ready. Yeah. Uh, coming in. You know, the tripod on uh, Nevada, we found that lying separate, mm -hmm. like sheared off at the base in the debris field. So there has to be, that's got to be a weak point. Alright, I'm not sure I'm getting anything helpful there. Derek, are we in the middle of a move? Yes. Okay, we're doing that to the right? Correct. Okay, yep. And it looks like we're once again peering through a hatch, maybe? On the part that rises up aft. The fuller part of it. I'm going to bring the camera down. Oh, actually, I think I see. Um, yeah, let me come in row again. Would those be the tr the tripod supports there? Those two round things. Yeah. Yeah. And then it looks like there's one forward of them in the center, uh, where those yes. bent pieces are bending over. Right. Okay. Well, it makes it easier to understand why it's not here. They didn't just tear off, it separated at this junction. Copy. Okay. So I have a question for our archaeologist. It seems as if the metal has been fairly well preserved. Um, at this depth and in this temperature, what about organic materials like rope, canvas, um, things like that? Would those have been preserved as well? Let's try and take a peek here. If we can. Uh, some of them can can be preserved uh, at depths like this because it's uh, very cold and uh, down here. Um, but typically, organic matter sure. is is decomposed uh, either through. Like uh, small animals, or um, like scavenging animals, or bacteria. We have a few. What we will see on Titanic is we've seen shoes, things that have been treated that are not subject to consumption, are are generally visible. Inside inside wrecks as well, depending on the conditions and if there's uh, a reaction with corrosion. No. Oh, basically uh, in the consumption and, uh, and the loss of the material, like iron oxide getting into it or that sort of thing, then we will see that kind of preservation as well. We'll also see paint in some instances. One of the questions here as we've been looking at all of this is this is an area that not only took a bomb hit, but also fire. And so we see more activity than white material, this could be corrosion, but, you know, the, the question is, and this is, we don't have an answer, is are we also looking at an area that was fire affected? Iron corrosion is basically a very, very slow moving fire. So what, what exactly are we seeing? It comes back to the point that the science on all this is emerging gradually, and it wasn't until Titanic was found that, uh, and Roy Cullimore and Laurie uh, Johnson started doing the work 
that we discovered that there are bacteria that actually eat this metal and what they excrete, the mineral deposit, is what forms many of the rusticles on Titanic. So again, this is cutting edge in Earth's final frontier. Okay, to come into the This area, area, that's over, this yep. area we're looking at that's over Cryfly is uh, what's called sky control. And it's where the ship's officers would uh, direct the anti-aircraft descent. And as we can see, there's just nothing left of the equipment that would have been there. There would have been a um, some antennas and a radio direction finder loop, which pre-war photos clearly show in that area, but uh, everything there is gone now. Oh. Oh. And that's the very top of the pilot house structure. Mike, I'm not seeing any distortion to those tripod bases. It's almost like it was lifted right off. Yeah, probably was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was the tripod stand used for? Uh, observation the platform. Mass had a platform and machine gun and lookout. And lookout, yeah. For those who are just joining us, we are currently in Papahanao Mokoakea Marine National Monument on Expedition NA-154 Ala'au Moana Kai'uli, the path of the deep sea traveler. And you are currently looking at the USS Yorktown. Such an important part of the story, Malia, of the place of this wreck and uh, how that continues into the story of how we care for this place. Papahanao Mokuakea is a, a national treasure, a cultural treasure, an international site recognized for its significance from a cultural and biological perspective. The largest continuous marine protected area in America and one of the largest in the world. And this history that is here is one layer of many, uh, many reasons that make this place special and also part of uh, what protects uh, these sites now and into the future. Derek, maybe do one more five meter move in this uh, further to the right, and I think that might get us where we need to be. Um, well, let's see, we started that move 1711, so it's been about half the time it normally takes to translate. Okay. Just, just for your awareness. I just, uh, but yeah, if you want to be further, well, out. I'm trying to get us close, but not too far away for imagery. All right, let, let's wait then. Okay. And you've got two overhangs coming in board uh, right in front of us. Yeah, well, that's a good point. I mean, we could, could move five meters further away from that as well. well. I was just pointing out to T-Dogs. I'm advocating for dive plan. Tito and Jake. I'm sorry? No, I was just mentioning those two overhangs there. Yep, thank you. I was just trying to get a little bit lower and start turning to the left. Yeah. Nope. Uh, the second one definitely comes out further than the first, the more aft one does. Now that, that we haven't seen before, that kind of deformity there in the bulkhead. You're talking about this? Uh, uh, well, it's bouncy. So right here, those are not circular, non-rectangular holes. On the yeah, that's side we've, there. Been, we've been wondering about that preferential corrosion, what happened to that compartment, and I think right. that's what Jim meant when he was talking about fire damage. If the paint was baked off of it, then it would expose the, uh, right. the steel directly to the salt water rather than having at least a layer of paint to protect it. But Can I peek that's in there real quick, Tito? Yes. Guesswork. Thank you, sir. So. 
So the question is, does that look like corrosion? That looks like massive corrosion just pouring off of that wall to me. Yeah. And that means something's really changed the surface of that steel compared to the surface of the painted steel. And you see that aft as well. Yeah. And if it really just baked this to red hot up there, maybe yeah. that was the difference. Right. Doesn't yeah. have that protective paint. And once a, uh, an opening like that is exposed, it's just raw steel, then it's going to have all the corrosion make that rough edge around it. It's but interesting that you don't see that back in this area. Yeah. Let's see if I can take a peek back in there. Uh, I'm going to focus to the aft of that now. That Would area. you like me to adjust anything? I think we're okay for here. Just a comparison image. Bridge nap. Can we do a five meter move bearing two seven zero? Thank you. Boy, I would guess these are the first compartments that are going to vanish in the next few decades. They've got, a, they've got a head start. So Hans, as you're talking about the corrosion there, um, you, you talked about the, the microbes and, and that can be iron, but it, it also reminds me of the work that was done by Dr. Tim Stacey at NIST, who helped out the marine archaeology community on a finite element model for the, basically what was happening with the corrosion for several metallic ships. He worked on Titanic, uh, worked on Monitor, and also we worked on USS Arizona. And you know that, those type of models took a long time to do, but he was able, as a metallurgist, was able to um, help predict uh, corrosion, uh, uh, destruction, uh, rate, uh, in terms of the timing that would happen. And that's all pretty important for us in the maritime archaeology community as we look at in-situ preservation of these sites. As you talked about Hans earlier in the dive, um, you know, how we look at these sites in, in far-reaching places, deep places, but also looking at, at them as memorials as well. So fortunate for us, we, we have a lot of different expertise and talent from around government, and in this case NIST, and, and other experts around the, the world that will help us out on this, that, that bring different different expertise to bear. I remember talking at Tim Faith years ago, and you know, he's not a marine archaeologist, he never was involved in the marine community, but his talent sure did have a, have a big help for us down the road. And NIMPS is the NOAA National Marine Fisheries Service? Uh, this was NIST that I was referring to, the ah, National copy. Technology. Yeah, Dr. Tim Fakey was uh, based up in uh, Gatesburg, Maryland. Awesome. He ran the metallurgy lab for NIST for a number of years. What is that sticking off inboard off of that railing? Yeah, thanks for that. I mean, we've learned a lot about how complex these large steel ships are and how they they fall apart and how how we can expect to see these areas of intensive preferential That's corrosion. Right. I think there's a surf platform. Okay. Sebastian, yeah. does that look like biological to you? Are you referring to that white line that's hanging, or the yes, other right up there? Up there. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look too biological to me, and there might be some small biota on it, but I can't really tell from this angle okay. on view. That's just curious. It's interesting that railing's intact. Kudos to that uh, vendor. Oh, that metal is very different looking. Different stuff is growing, huh? Yeah. Oh, there's a searchlight or a speaker, maybe? Can we do a push in here, Tito? Are we Absolutely. stable enough? I like these slow moves. So like a magnetic balancer? Oh. I'll catch it on the next duck. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's a bracket.
One thing that I thought I saw in the upper left is, you know, up at the top of the of the island, there are going to be right. very large speakers. Right there. Like right up. Uh, Look like an air horn or something. There. Right there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's one of them or if they were around the tripod, around the observation platform, but they had to be, have a way it to does get... Look, it does look like that. ...get orders down to the deck over the sound of the aircraft. And so they had the big voice from the sky. They had multiple <laughs> large speakers. Yeah. We are looking at pictures. Yeah, we're looking at some pictures of this area pre-war, and that's what they are. And that was what it was for, was to communicate uh, down to the parts of the And the rounded structural sponson looks uh, like uh, where uh, searchlights were mounted at one point. Yeah. In that photo. Derek, how's the move going? It's really slow to respond. I mean, it's pretty much staying where it was. That's a, yeah, that's a horn. Yeah, it also looks like the ship was um, at the very top. All right, well, we're, I think we're a little too close. Can we move like three meters further to the right? Yeah, we want to try another five. Yeah, yeah. Let's do, yeah we can do five. Okay. Just take note of that, uh, of that whistle just above that observation platform, very top. Say again, sure. Looks like there's a, a like a steam whistle just to the left on, on top. At the very top. At the very top of the uh, of the funnel assembly. Bridge nav. Uh, You're looking at it right in the upper there. left corner. Of With the, the flared in. Yeah, I think I need to look at Five meters, <laughs> two seven zero. I think yeah. we're talking about this thing here. Thank you. Yeah, we can try and get a zoom on an up bounce. Up, right. up top and it has just top of the frame end. left. If you just give me yep. a moment, yep. yeah. I'm going to come up just a hair and up. swing left a bit. That's it. Yep. And just coming up another hair. Okay, that looks good. You're welcome to zoom. Coming in. Oh, yeah, and kicking well, it. That was a runaway zoom. So kicking right. it right just a bit. There we go. Is that the item you're talking about, sure? Oh, it's almost harder to see it now. Than that. It'll come out. We're full wide. Are those anemones or sponges, maybe, that we're seeing seeing on that railing up there? Those are definitely um, cnidarians. I'm leaning towards anemones rather than hydrozoans. Um, I don't see any sponges so far. I saw some earlier down, earlier in the, down, further down the wreck. There were some glass polysomids, but. Other than that, it's mostly these guys I've been saying. I can try and get a zoom on that one right below the horn. It almost looks like a plumos anemone. Uh, would you circle it and I'll uh, yeah. try to get you centered? I think it's this guy. Roger that. Do you think there's a correlation between you them living push. in this area and the... Um, like level of deterioration we're seeing on the metal? with the corrosion. Give me one second. Okay. Um, got to get some screenshots and documentation. That looks like a Venus trap anemone in particular. And it's cause kind of different ones on the rails though. Um, All right, I got to come out. Mike, have you guys imaged this inboard side already? Uh, no, not other, not other than what we've been doing. We're okay. we're waiting to come down and do a full. Yeah, fourth. it looks like you're missing the outer skin just aft of that outcrop there. We're missing what? 
doesn't look like you've got any sheathing here, any here, or here. Yeah. Oh, that's not a surprise. I mean, the, this this whole part, I think, was on fire after the first bomb strike. Um, to answer your question about the biota that I'm more settled in, um, I've been noticing that um, they're largely avoiding the larger metal parts of the deck and seem to really prefer these rails. Um, I'm not quite sure why. I imagine the higher up ones are getting better current. I'm not exactly the most skilled at shipwreck biota, so bear with me. No, thank you for that explanation. Well, I think many of the same trends definitely Just going to swing right to check for safety. Copy. Part of recognizing this place and is, is part of the back habitat. Left a bit. Ed, anything of interest you want to look at? Uh, no, I think I'm good here. We might uh, do a little push on that larger outcrop uh, inboard as we move back. Oh, it looks like it peeled away down below there. I don't see any hazards except for this little guy sticking up towards us up there. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm six, oh, seven meters Oh, a nice view away. into that compartment. Did you see that? Right down in here, where that ladder descends. Uh, coming it, down a wee bit. It's strange. I sure here, a couple of plus, uh, as we're looking at this, one of the questions is, with the stack being insulated, the possibility is, is that what we're also looking at is not only corrosion, but perhaps a reaction to insulation or, say, asbestos. Uh. Alexis has noted that the, the railings here uh, are distorted, fire damage, softened. Can, uh, we're a little close. Do you see right? that wire coming up? It's really thin, comes up right here. Yeah, nice. That okay. seems to just be going to that platform. Great. Are we getting too close to that? We are quite, we're four meters away from that, but I know that we're going in the other direction. I mean, we're trying to, but I feel like it's sort of penduling towards the island. Well, we, we seem to be inching. Okay. We're not metering. <laughs> and now, Hey guys, I've been um, full wide messaging with Phil. I think we're gonna try a slightly different approach to this um, mosaicing. Um, given that we're moving very slowly, we're probably getting very comprehensive coverage video-wise, uh, even if it's not systematic. So rather than try to do this full survey, and which is, with ship moves is probably gonna take forever, I think if we can do the same thing along the back. Uh, yeah. The aft part yeah. of this inner structure, I'm I think we're probably going to have the coverage that we need to have everything. Um, okay. So the plan isn't all that different. Is, <laughs> same moves, just without the requisite. Uh, hold on, hold on. Um, so if we can, sorry, Derek, um, if we can move the, the direction backwards that we're going is still good because we do need the safety, but it, when you're ready, if we can also move further aft, which is to the right now, yeah. um, we're going to want to start doing the same sort of like, um, coverage that we're doing, uh, just on that backside. Okay. Roger that. Thanks. Yep. How many decks are below? Are we missing some decks below us? I know we don't want to drop under these overhangs. But maybe we just tilt down. Are you seeing the flight deck yet? What's our altitude showing? So our altitude's 15 meters. Oh, okay. Oh, well, we're way up. I'm going to say that we start seeing the bottom around 10 meters, 11 yeah, meters. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, looks like a piece of, I don't know what that is, hose maybe coming out of there? Fire hose?
I don't, I'm pretty sure it's not what it is, but it looks like there's a lawn chair like leaning against the tower. I keep thinking that's what it is too, uh, <laughs> down there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like an Adirondack. Looks like the plastic Adirondack. It does. <laughs> Can I do a little push here, Tito? Yes. So, this accumulation of material on this platform, that seems to speak a little towards, you know, material burning and falling down perhaps, or or it could have come off from corrosion down here, maybe. I don't see where it's coming from. That pile right in front of us. You know, we're also looking at with clearly heat affected metal on the railing uh, and right. some other damage there. And then there's plating that's missing from the stack uh, aft of where we are right now. Uh, and the after action report does it says in this area they talk about uh, talks about a hit in this area, but seemingly higher. I don't know. Here's pipe line. That's good. Look at that. Oh, that's a good shot. We get a tighter shot of that if you're interested. Up, down, anything? Uh, yeah, Mike? Uh, if you, if you kind of like can pan with it as we descend, that would be a good shot we don't have of that, uh, of those windows. Sure. Coming down. Okay. You know, I'm awful close on the other side. Yeah, uh, about five meters. Yeah. I can uh, <coughs> reframe it just a little. Uh, to the left or right? No, I, I can just do a uh, quarter zoom. Uh, stand by, ready? Yes. Just like that. That's probably sufficient, eh, Mike? Uh, coming out. Uh, yeah, full wide. Yeah, we're good. Bridge, Nev. Please do a ship move one five meters at bearing two four zero. Correct, thank you. Oh, so that is the stack right there, isn't it? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so that move we just put in should pull us a little bit away from the island and to the right. Yeah, I know, that's great. So, uh, that, can I do a quick zoom in here, show that interior? Yes. I mean, just that metal in there looks so different than the exterior metal. It's almost pristine. Oh. Oh, full wide. Um, I think this is going to be of interest here. platform stuck out way further than anything else. OK, 
happy to jump in for a shot of that. You're welcome to zoom. Thank you. And coming left a bit. Yeah, aye. You know, something else that's happening is this whole island is elevated and just catches a lot more current. Maybe that has something to do Great, with uh, increased corrosion as well. I don't know. But uh, most of the hull's buried in the mud. I missed the earlier parts of the dive, Hans. Did you get a feel for how deep in the mud? Do you, like, is it? Uh, it looked like the water line aft, but up, up in the bow and the stem, definitely almost above the anchor. But oh, wow. the vessels heeled hard over to starboard, so uh, on that starboard side, almost over to the anchor. But definitely deeper at the bow. And that horn looks like the ship's horn to be not one of the speakers. I think the speakers would have faced down towards the deck. Well, it looks like it has an air horn uh, yeah that's behind more of a it, behind the horn there that's cylinder more of a ship's horn rather than a speaker for shouting instructions at the deck but i'm just amazed at the corrosion and the cracking and the, the damage it does really comes across as a dissimilar metal it's so wasted yeah especially given the fact that the interior metal i'm not i don't see any of that in there but that may be the heat treating. Hi. So alo aloha kakahiaka. Thanks for joining us live. We are currently in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Looking live at the USS Yorktown, part of the Battle of Midway that occurred in June of 1942, uh, the battle uh, played out over three days. And the Yorktown was one of the um, aircraft carriers that sank too, to the seafloor. That oval. May I? I can see right through there. Can I come in? Yes. Thank you. Yep, uh, look, looking at the port side of the island. See ya. Sorry, you can continue. Mike's gone to grab some breakfast. I just did and came back up. Right. I'm gonna try to full zoom, pull out. Wow, that's pretty crazy. I'll have to pull on the, on the down. Oh, coming all the way out, just see where we are. All right, sorry, get all spooked. <laughs> And Ed, you're welcome to do a little directing here. Yeah, uh, maybe a little bit left. Let me just come wide. Uh, how's right the camera, how's right the camera angle? Right there, that's good, thank you. And wow. uh, on the next down, I'm gonna do a slow pull out. That's just gutted and, inside. Oh, uh, big heave, sorry. And coming out. Are we thinking that the inside looks like that due to the fire? I'm thinking so. That was exactly it. Thank you. Full wide. Looks like we're eight to nine meters off the flight deck. For our viewers that have recently joined us, you may notice that we are diving with only ROV Atalanta right now, and we typically do uh, a dual body system with ROV Hercules and Atalanta. Is that uh, flight deck? Go ahead. Yeah, flight deck's uh, five or six meters below us. 
That's not it right there? Yeah, I okay. believe so. And I'm just going to do a sweep left to right. Just that pan's a nice shot. I'm peeking into that compartment. Little Holothorian friend. It's starting to open up just a wee bit. What's that? We're starting to open up just a wee bit. Okay. I'm going to say we're much closer to eight than we were. I think Good. The minimum was four back. <laughs> yeah. looking better from my standpoint. Did y'all say that this was or was not the flight deck beneath us? Yeah, we think that 90 degree angle at the base here is the flight deck. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's probably accumulated some silt a little bit. On the diagram I have, it shows that there was a, I think it says a 250 oh, kilogram bomb striking the flight deck inboard of this side of the island and penetrating and causing damage. Well, there's. I don't uh, know if that corresponds to what Jim was talking is about that earlier. Right here? Yeah, it looks like there's some. The bulkhead's missing yeah. there. Well, there's a lot of damage on so this side of the island. And yeah. It just jumped. I was just looking at the uh, Argus altitude, and it, was, it occasionally jumps way up, like, yeah, so there might be a slip. hole underneath us that we just can't image. Yeah. We could look down. Is there a mid-elevator? Atalanta, not Argus. So from the shore side, what we're looking at here, we think, we agree, huh? this, given the way that some of that plate's pushed up and torn away, yeah, that's all consistent with like that bomb hit that came here right at the stack. And yeah. then the other bomb hit is just aft of the midship's elevator. Right, the midship's elevator is still aft of the island. It's aft okay. of the the aircraft crane yeah. a bit, so it's right. not in this area. But we will see the midship's elevator. But this elevator. is where that 250 kilogram bomb hit, I think. Yeah, so and I think that's why we're elevator. seeing the damage to the, the bulwarks here on the island. And are you guys seeing altitude jumps that make you think there's a hole underneath us? I would uh, suspect as much. Derek just noticed one. Yeah. Yeah, I just jumped up to 65 for a split second there from 12 meters. That would be all the way through. Uh, I don't no, that's just way down. 98. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. Maybe the best thing to do is as we move aft, to turn and look back at, with the angle at this section of the flight deck inboard of the island, see if we can catch that. But these images are, are really amazing. It's very impactful, pun not intended, to see both the torpedo damage on the port side, the size of it, and then to see the amount of damage on the island. Do we stir up a bunch of silt? Or is it just darker there? Well, that might be silt. Very, very like fine silt. Yeah. 
pretty fine. So mm -hmm. just to the left of that silt cloud is a very uh, hopefully interesting area where that bulkhead is missing. Right in there. Bottom of the stack inboard. Hi, team. Uh, we're getting uh, call, uh, calls and, and uh, data feeds from colleagues and other colleagues at the university. Um, has mentioned that it's absolutely possible that the corrosion that we're seeing is related to fire. He states that if metal gets hot enough, it can change the crystal structure of it. And if this happens, it can change the galvanic relationship between the portion of the metal that we've got and portion that it's not. So that's, uh, that's great insight and data. Thanks, Chris. Very interesting. Metallurgical changes from the heat. If it were allowed and possible, it'd be really cool to get samples of it and compare it to, you know, other types of steel. Um, because also having been quenched and being underwater for this long, I wonder what the changes would be like. Shore team, just be aware we're going to begin to start a shift change pretty soon. Before we begin our shift change, we want to just send our aloha out to all of the families um, who may have had um, a member of their family that were part of this Battle of Midway. Um, we send out our aloha and um, deep reverence for this site, um, for what occurred. And so um, aloha nui from Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument and uh, wishing you all a beautiful day. And thank you, 4 to 8 Watch. Uh, can't tell you, you guys how exciting are, this was for You me. guys are professionals. Yeah, this was pretty spectacular. It's an honor. Thank you, Hans. We appreciate that. It's been really, really special to be in here with y'all and learn so much from you. The 0 to 4 Watch will no longer say anything about the other watches. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Can't count on that. That's his Hans has been on all of them. <laughs> Hans, I'm starting to wonder if uh, we've messed up our wash kit. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. Hans, before I go, are we looking at torpedo damage on this side at all? This is bomb damage. Bomb damage? All right, 8 to 12 watch coming on. Watch change of video. On Good luck, team.
And Tito signing off. Thanks, Tito. Not right now. So we're we're currently sitting just uh, on the inside of the tower, and they've been moving up the center line of the ship. Yep. So they've been doing it pretty incrementally. Um, okay. So we can, I guess, our next move can just be that w in the same direction. Uh, so we're moving towards the stern. Correct. No? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. What was the last 15 meters? All right, uh, the watch change is getting settled in and uh, starting to move again. Uh, what's the plan? So our plan is, well, sorry. You go ahead. You go ahead. Sorry, I was just. I'm just. I was just giving what I was passed along. Yeah, yeah. You go ahead. Um, I was just about. To, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> we are going to finish imaging the uh, island here. We're at the very uh, aft part of it. We and we're just going to. We're getting. We were going to do like a full, like a legit earth mosaic run, but or like um, survey. But we realized that we're moving so slowly with the ship that we're getting full coverage anyway. So we're just going to continue imaging this back part of it maybe uh, go around, finish that, uh, continue down the center line of the flight deck to the stern, uh, look at the bomb damage on the on the deck, um, and then see if it's safe enough for the vehicle to look under the, the canted uh, flight deck on the starboard aft side, which is like the one part of the wreck we haven't gotten to yet. And then that those are the last objectives. Cool. So, 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 go team. Cool. Sounds All right. great. So for, I guess for this next move, we're going to want to move aft a little bit, and then we're going to want to kind of get in behind the tower. Yeah, I mean, we're almost there. So if we just move a oh. little bit, yeah, it's like right. We just need to kind of come up to the right a little bit and pirouette okay. a little. Okay. Um, that seems like the base. It's possibly the base of uh, one of the cranes. I'm not quite sure yet. Okay. This? Yeah. Is that what we were talking about before? 
I think so. It was just aft of the stacks. Yeah. It was pretty close in. Oh, we only looked at the top of it before. Yeah, we only saw the very top of it. It's the uh, the aircraft. So you can see over plane. here, there's like a, a ledge. Um, we're going to want to come and image that whole side of it. But I mean, really, this is, we're not, it doesn't need to take too long. Yeah, but. well, it, I take it back. It might not be. That might be too close to the stacks. Yeah. I think the crane is further aft and yeah, maybe okay. a little separate from the, the island. But anyway, yeah, so if you want to move us a little bit, further, uh, yeah, to the right. I okay. think that, that'll be good. Cool. Let's see. Just want to say <clears throat> thank you to all those tuning in on Nautilus Live and on YouTube. Uh, we invite you to come on over to Nautilus Live if you're on YouTube and share your comments and questions with us. This is Daniel Kinzer, uh, 8 to 12 watch as the science communication fellow here sitting in the back row next to Mahina. Um, we were with you when we first acquired the Yorktown and, and we're back to, uh, back to uh, enjoy right. finishing the job. Bridge now. So we've been going up and down a bit. Um, just at this altitude. We've been going up and down a bit. Okay. I'll come down. We're 14 meters. Sorry, what's that, Bob? I say we're at 14 meters right now off the deck. Yeah, that's about right. So we can't really see everything right here. I'll come down a little bit. Yeah, I think this is what we were seeing the very top of yeah. earlier. And I, I think, think so. that's a little separated from the island. I'm guessing it's the, the crane. It looks like it has a boom and some uh, winch and cabling. Yeah, I think so. There it is, separate from the island, just aft. Yeah. That means we're getting right to the midship's elevator. Yeah, and it's just past yeah. that elevator that the bomb hit, right. which will eventually... And you can see the crane. Yeah. Yep. The crane's right here, right next to that porthole. Yeah, if you are just joining us, uh, we are diving on the USS Yorktown, uh, which was part of the Battle of Midway, 1942. Think that's the elevator? Yep, that's the elevator, and just past that, which we'll get to in a bit, is, is where one of the bombs hit. Aloha mai kako, aloha kakuhiaka kako. My name is Mahina Lenny Cavallari. I'm on board uh, Nautilus and Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. As Dr. Val had mentioned that we are currently viewing images of the USS Yorktown. Um, you know, we come and we reach all of our audiences with a heavy and humble heart. We're exploring this very sensitive and also tragic historical site. So we appreciate everyone joining us.
And for this dive, uh, it's a very special dive. Uh, we're also joined by a number of our colleagues uh, from Silver Spring, Maryland. So we have a whole shore team uh, supporting us today. <laughs> Quite extensive. Right. Right, and we're moving very deliberately around this wreck uh, in order to be uh, non invasive. This is a video only dive, so we are being extremely careful with our maneuvers around here. So it's slow, but we're getting it done. <laughs> yeah. We um we yeah we did a whole survey along the the flight deck edge and then along the uh, mud line. We saw some of the torpedo damage from the aerial torpedoes that hit Yorktown one day, which are not the torpedoes that sank it, that came from a Japanese submarine the next day on the other side. Uh, Yorktown withstood a lot of attacks uh, over a, over just like a one month period between the Battle of Coral Sea and the Battle of Midway. Okay, pay Alexis, go. <laughs> what well, we believe what we're looking at here is uh, to the right of the screen is uh, the crane, uh, the base of the crane, in the middle is a cable trunk of what remains of it that led up to the director. And then to the left, uh, it looks like it's yeah. the foot of a, of a map. And that crane probably had a significant arm that's collapsed. According to some of the early Ballard images, it was used to hoist airplanes. I think, the, I think the arm's still on it, lowered and, uh, and okay. oriented forward. Yes. Really? Yeah, I think we saw the arm okay. oh. on it down here. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not sure how much of that director is left. I can't quite make it out. Yeah. It looks like it's gone. We make it yeah. around the back it's gone. I'm lateraling over right now, so I just, <clears throat> yeah, I just, I'm not going to have enough lateral to get all the way over there. So. Yeah. USS Yorktown is part of a, we're clear of the back of it, so. part of an incredible and tragic story, not just of this battle that involves so many other vessels, many of which also rest here um, in the depths of Papahanaumokuakea, but, but really is um, a helpful teacher in, in reminding us of the atrocities of war and, and hopefully can be a beacon of hope as we remember those that were lost and their bravery that that didn't happen in vain. Amazing to see the collaboration from uh, both the U.S. side and Japanese side, such a such a staunch friendship, such great allies now. Just over 80 years after this. Boy, that's really shiny. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. It's kind of unsettling. So it looks like the boom's going out away from us. Right? Oh, I do see it now, Hans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. yeah. right there. Still attached to its cable. Amber, can we zoom in? 
Yeah, I'm sure thing is zooming. Looking at that shiny thing there. Yeah. Okay. Stainless? Uh, maybe. Is that a... Oh, that can't... Well, it looks like a is ladder, but... Stair? Yeah, it's yeah. stairs. Yeah. Wow. wow. One of the references we have here on the desk in front of us in the back row is something put together by the the uh, Battle of Midway Roundtable on damage to the USS Yorktown CV-5. It's rather handy summation from several sources, okay, but I've zoom back out. Coming out. learned a lesson is not to get reference diagrams printed in red ink when you're sitting in a room with red lights. I think we need to move further astern. So I'm I'm lateraled over quite a bit. I need to I need to come up. And I'll take the lateral off. I'm gonna drift back that way. Yeah, let's head towards the stern some more. Do we get enough for the back side of this? Yeah, so I was just thinking we should come down and uh, face the stern and then continue on the midline of the flight deck towards the stern. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Daniel Wagner just came in and showed me how to make my red light a white light. And look, this is my first long cruise on Nautilus. So. I'm not sure I knew that. This is all new. This van's all new. You're doing great, Hans. You're doing great. Mm -hmm. Mike and Hans and, and, and uh, to the team on shore, for, for those viewers who are <clears throat> tuning in for the first time, can we share a little bit of, uh, a little bit of the historical context, a little bit of the story of, of what brought Yorktown to this, to this place at the, at the depths of Papahanaumokuakea? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> this battle took place June 4th, uh, 1942. Previously, like the month before, uh, Yorktown was with um, its uh, sister ship Lexington, another carrier, at the Battle of the Coral Sea. And uh, Lexington was sunk and Yorktown was damaged. Um, but they also managed to damage two of the Japanese carriers. So that leads into Midway because Yorktown limps back to Pearl Harbor and gets uh, repaired uh, while the Japanese forces... Um, come together and uh, decide to uh, try to take Midway Island, uh, which is literally midway between uh, the U.S. West Coast and Japan. Um, and uh, Japan pretty much sent their entire naval force out. Uh, it was a, a task force of four aircraft carriers and support ships, and then another one with Admiral Yamamoto's flagship Nagato, a battleship, and a, and a whole other bunch of uh, support ships. Um, they started by raiding uh, two islands in uh, the Aleutian Islands in Alaska, and then uh, the, the rest of the task force uh, attacked Midway. They started by bombing the, the island of Midway, uh, but they, they left the airstrip. They got a lot of the anti-aircraft guns, and they left the airstrip intact because they wanted to take it and, and, and use it themselves. Um, meanwhile, the, the aircraft at Midway um, att actually attacked the, uh, 
the Japanese aircraft carriers. Uh, there were four of them, um, Kaga, Akagi, Soryu, and Hiryu. And um, none of them scored hits. Most of them were shot down, actually. Um, they weren't the experienced attack pilots that the aircraft carriers had. So unbeknownst to the Japanese, the US had, inter had um, figured out a lot of their radio code messages and had cracked that. So they had figured out that um, Japan was going for Midway. So they sent <clears throat> uh, Horna Enterprise in Yorktown uh, up there to uh, inter intercede them. And so th when they attacked the Japanese carriers, it was a surprise. And the Japanese were caught switching over their uh, aircraft from aerial bombs from Midway to torpedoes for aircraft carriers when the first strikes came. And three of the ships, Akagi, Kaga, and Soryu, were hit in that uh, strike by the U.S. Uh, planes uh, and, and caught on fire uh, because all of the bombs that they were taking off of the aircraft, they had not put away. They were still on the hangar deck and it detonated most of the bombs on, on the ships. Um, so then <clears throat> Yorktown was then found by the last car remaining Japanese carriers planes and it was bombed. And then they sent a second squadron. They said, okay, Yorktown's been hit. Go hit. They told the pilots to go attack um, one of the one of the undamaged, <clears throat> not sinking carriers. But the Yorktown crew had already put out all the fires and had righted the ship and had pumped a lot of it dry. So the second wave of attacks from Hiryu actually um, bombed and air used aerial torpedoes on Yorktown again because they thought it was a different carrier. Um, so then it's listing to, to port again. Uh, and the next day, they got the fires under control again. They got it somewhat righted, uh, but the, uh, a Japanese submarine, I-168, fired four torpedoes, two of which hit Yorktown, one missed, and one sank uh, a destroyer escort, a uh, USS Hammond that was uh, moored alongside Yorktown. So Yorktown, the next night, finally um, rolls over and, and sinks after they evacuated the, all of the survivors from the from the ship, 101, 141 men were killed in the attacks, and the rest were evacuated onto destroyers before it sank. Mahalo nui, Mike. Thank you. Thank you for that context. Welcome any further context from shore, of course, or from others in the van on the team. But really helpful for those tuning in to to know a little bit of this story. Uh, help us honor the sacred place. Really amazing. I know one thing that's been uh, surprising to me um, is just to see how well Atalanta is doing at uh, at imaging, uh, imaging the shipwreck, imaging the Yorktown for us.